Hey guys, Mike here. So we got a huge week ahead of us and I'm gonna give you a boatload of data to chew over and you can decide for yourself what you think because what you're seeing now is people putting out these charts and saying, well, over the last 50 years, blah, blah, blah. But I'm gonna show you the last 50 years, the last 10, 20, and then you can see it in the chart and go, oh, well, that makes sense. Okay, I, I can see, you know, is this true? Is this untrue? Does it make sense? And so we'll going to that, also something very important when it comes to semiconductors, okay? Very important on that right there. But if you didn't see what happened Friday, I mean, I think people can certainly keep arguing all they want that it's not computers or algos that run the market, but it was amazing if you didn't watch Saturday's video where they left us, you could see the S&P or the SPY right down that trend line, which goes all the way back to the 2023 year right there. So it's been holding up for a long time and to the penny, just sitting right on that thing right there. And so that got rejected there. Question is, is it going to come down, bring liquidity, all that good stuff? Because remember, we got the FOMC, got unemployment numbers, we got all kinds of stuff happening. So we will see if we get that rate cut this week. Look at the cues. Bam. I mean, right on top of this thing. And what was amazing about this one right here is they actually sit there and left it. If you look right here on the one minute chart, look at that. That's where they left the last 15 minutes. Instead of having a huge run, run down like they normally do, right there on it. Look at IWM. Couldn't be more perfect. And I mean, this was another one to the absolute penny. Look at this right here on the one minute chart. What they did. Look at that. Like, I think it was three minutes to a close, four minutes. Hit it right there, right on it, and hell. Now, what else did they do? Look at this one. The, the Fed funds rate target. This has never been wrong going into a meeting, if I'm not mistaken. 50 50 now whether it's a 50 basis point cut or a 25 basis point cut i'm actually gonna do a members video on this to show you there's a chance it doesn't even matter but when you look look what's happening you're looking at a month ago it was only 25 percent for a 50 basis point cut and then a week later it went to 30 percent and then on thursday it was 48 percent and then on friday it went to 50 50 which is absolutely just nuts right but that's what they've done going into this week okay that's what you call we don't know what's going to happen and check this out this is very important this is the median two-week returns for the s p since 1950 and this is where we talk about the halves right first half of a month versus second half of a month but here's the thing is this even accurate that, that's what you really gotta look at and so we'll compare it to this year to see right we look over here and we see what's supposed to be the best month also look at the percentages it's not like it's huge gains zero to almost two percent right and then it's a zero to negative half a percent. Well, you can see, obviously, we're coming into September, which is supposed to be one of the, the more reddish type of months. But when you, when you look at July, the first half, it's supposed to be really good. Let's see what's happening this year. Okay, here's the first half of July. Guess what? It was good, right? It went up almost 4%. And remember, that chart only goes up to 2%. So that was good. All right, we come back over and say, okay, what about the first half of March? What's happened this year? Well, first half of March, so it's supposed to be a percent, percent and a half. It was up a percent and a half, so it, it was green. So, so far, that's pretty good. You know, what about this one right here? We say, okay, let's just go into the first part of January. That's supposed to be green. Well, not really, right? It was slightly red to flat, okay? And then we go into these three, which will go to the second half of March and then all of April, okay? Which is supposed to be at least, so you know, total combined about 3% up on average. And when we look, the second half of March is really good. But April sucked, you know, it just sucked. And so it was red, it was rough. So that was just not the case, okay? And because why? The biggest thing is all these X factors, right? Inflation and the, the jobs worry. Oh my God, are we going to go into a recession? Oh my God, we got rate cuts coming up and all this fun stuff, okay? That's where this comes in at. Because I think the biggest thing to look at, rate cuts one thing, but don't forget, you got quad witching this week. It's called op a big options expiration coming up. And when you look at this one, this is the S&P performance from September 19th to the 26th, last 50 years. I don't care about the last 50 years. Give me the last like 10 to 15, right? And you can see, not a whole lot of green. It's, it's just not, right? Going back to 2004, it's not a whole lot of green. Some years are flat, you know, some years are up half percent, somewhere in that two weeks. Okay, so again, we're looking at that going, you know, could that be the case? Absolutely, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? And the market hates more than anything. What? Uncertainty. But this is the big one post op x of september it's a big op x coming up and you can see post op x you know not good either <laughs> so and then october is not supposed to be that great either and so that's what we're looking at on this does it mean it has to be that way absolutely not it does not have to be that way but it's just the market doesn't like uncertainty and what do we got more than anything else a lot of uncertainty 
And so that's why I can tell people who tell you, I know exactly where it's going. It's like they are lying through their teeth. There's no way it can be passing a lot of technical tests, There's no, especially with all these X factors we got. But when we look at semiconductors, right, because they're performing horribly, it, it is it's tough for the market. But what have you seen? Rebounds, right? And ARM, remember, we talked about them buying those leaps for 2025, 2026, and all that good stuff, right? W formation going on, higher and low, higher high. And you can see this is clearly what? This is a parallel channel. This is exactly what this is. Look, it lines up perfectly. So right now it's in this channel. Does it end up coming back down? That's what we got to figure out. Okay, so some people are really high up on these leaps. You look in the MU, you know, got a little, what looks like to be a little double bottom action going on right here, it looks like. Okay, so maybe that's bottoming out right here. Maybe it's going to start to move up. We can start to put trend lines on this and all that fun stuff. And again, semiconductors may be getting started to get bought up because, I mean, they've been just getting hammered what's happening you can draw your trend line here waiting for a third touch if you want to you can bring this down right here and say okay well i like this one better going back to july 2024 still waiting on a third touch but again let's see what happens if it breaks above this trend line okay same way now you got arm at the top of the channel you got this one hadn't quite touched that trend line it's still looking a little rough leaving equal lows which a lot of times like you're taking out so again though and, it's, and you see that trend line lines up with this resistance right here which goes back you know a decent way so that would be a nice little area to get a rejection if we're going to get it if not you'll get an explosive move out of it right amd you know right here is already broken through that trend line sitting at resistance right now and when you look at this one you can clearly see a little w formation a little w pattern forming on that one higher low not quite a higher high though right and so we look at this one and it's, and it's a decent resistance and all those moving averages right above it okay and so if it can break through there that's explosive but what do you normally get a lot of times rejections that's what happened last time when it came up with all of those moving averages and so you know we go over to smci this one's been destroyed i mean no ifs ands or buts about that and we go over here this one we had to pull up the weekly moving averages remember and it was bouncing off the 100 weekly moving average and so far that is held up okay but it is at resistance okay and so this is another one is this the bottom and this one can move really really fast all right when we pull up uh, the volume range volume profile you know you can see why exactly this thing can move so far up but this is another one it's just sitting right there resistance so does it explode out got all these gaps fair value gaps again this has been nuked and so that's a big thing to look at right here and you can see all of those volume gaps right when you, when you get in those volume gaps it can move really fast especially when it's filling actually real gaps on the chart right there you can see and so that's something to watch out for on this one it's a high flyer and it's down like, what did it go down? 66% or something? You know, it's just, just nuts. And the, from July down from that short report, it's just been absolutely bleeding out like crazy. So that is something else. You can watch another one here, okay? And these were up way higher than NVIDIA has been up. So they've been flying because they were getting beat down even more in NVIDIA. And speaking of NVIDIA, you look at this one. Again, it's setting at resistance right now. It hadn't quite got to that trend line. It's another one that's being wedged in here, right? We talked about the formation on Thursday's video. And when you look at it, so if it starts dropping down, it can fall very quickly back down to around 118, 117. If it falls below that, it can go to 104 pretty quickly. And so that's what you got to watch. But also look at the seasonality. And I'll, I'll actually show you a real chart on this so you can see this, right? So, and so this is the semiconductors ETF seasonality. There is September, October. You see what happens at the end of October going November, December, which is whoo, absolutely soaring. And so could we make a pop here and then start to just kind of go sideways in October or down? Absolutely. But when you pull out and you pull up SMH and you sit here and we'll go to a weekly chart on this thing and you look at this right here at the end. Look at that. What is that doing? Every year from 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024. And so is this going to be just the fifth year where you see semiconductors rally starting in, you know, usually second half October, going November, December. Is that what's going to happen? Right, that usually is a seasonality. And seasonality exists because one thing that starts to happen in October sometimes is you'll, you'll see tax loss harvesting where all the ETFs, the funds are selling stuff for tax loss harvesting and then getting back into different positions to ride up the year end rally. Okay. And something else to keep an eye on, which again, still under control. This is IG and IHY credit spread. We talk about the bond market. You can clearly see in recessions and, and in you know, volatile times. See how high they've been? And you see where we're at now? You can barely even see it's like a blip on the radar. Again, they can go up quickly, but this is what you gotta watch. So far, the bond market is holding up. That's just the way it is, okay? And as long as it's okay, you know, you'll see your volatility, you're gonna see pullbacks and all that good stuff. As far as like the massive crashes and everything else, you know, most likely not, right? And we're in positive gamma territory right now. That's why you keep seeing these V-shaped recoveries. 
And if you're in trading view, another way to look at it, just pull up this one right here. And the ICE B of A US high yield index office adjusted spreads, and you see it right here. Okay, plain as day. Again, if it breaks above the trend line and starts to explode higher, then we have stuff to worry about. Until that happens, then you know it is what it is. It's all just noise, is what it is. Now, some can happen, right? There could be some uh, event, you know, black swan event we just unaware of uh, from somewhere, and it can happen, but you can't predict those, right? So you just have to play what's in front of you. And right now, that's what is in front of us, okay? Now, when you look over here and we go to different earnings, you see we're very light on earnings, man. There's nothing, nothing going to move the, the the meter here. I mean, you got General Mills on Wednesday. That's the first one you can think of. Then you'll go into Darden restaurants. That's going to talk about the consumer, Cracker Barrel, right? Are we good? Are we not? And then you'll have FedEx, transportation, which has been hanging on, right? When our home builder, see what they got to say. But the big thing is going to end up being your economic data, right? And so economic data right now, you can see right here, Monday, I mean, Empire State's Manufacturing Index, sure, it can cause some volatility, but, you know, is what it is, 830, nothing else, right? Tuesday, core retail sales, uh, retail sales month for month, that's that's really a big one. Industrial production is going to be another one. Wednesday, and this is the day that's going to be crazy, right? Building permits, housing starts, crude oil inventories, look at all this. The Federal Reserve meeting, do they finally like lower or just keep them the same? No, that's the big question. I think we all know they're probably going to do some lowering, right? It's just 25 or 50. Next day, unemployment claims, Philly Fed Manufacturing Index, existing home sales, CB leading index month over month, Friday, nothing to worry about. And so one thing we know is it's going to be extremely volatile this week. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, we haven't been through a normal like rate hiking or decreasing cycle in a while, usually it's panic and we're dropping at 50, 100, 100, you know, trying to get to zero because something crazy has happened. And so like in that members video, I'm going back to the, the, the parts where it actually was normal rate decreases to see how the market reacted and doing the research. It's actually kind of surprising. It's actually a little opposite of what people have been talking about. And so that's the kind of thing, you know, I like to be aware of just seeing what's happened in the past. But again, what do we, what do we not have in the past when you're comparing it? Didn't have inflation, didn't have prices almost twice as high, didn't have a housing market that is stuck because of low inventory and everything and high rates. And so all those different things, didn't have a, a, a economy where you're like, oof, are we finna go into recession over the next 12 months? Oh my goodness, like that kind of stuff. And so that's, you know, all these different things happening at once. So anyway, you know, let me know what you think is going to happen this week. I always like hearing from you guys. Please hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. Feel free to share the video with somebody. I'd appreciate that. Or sign up for the membership and everything where you get two private videos, a Discord, and a morning news brief, which is very detailed. So anyway, see you guys tomorrow for another fun one.